I'll see you again Cause good men never die From all indications, the name Captain Hosa Wells Okumbo may be resounding for a very long time to come. The proof came on August 13, 2022 in Abuja when a year memorial program was planned and beautifully executed in his honor. Captain Dr. Hosa Okumbo lived a life for others. A year after he passed on, the mighty movers and shakers, a former president and his wife, a royal personage, former ministers, current and past legislators, siblings, children, business associates, a fawning public, all gathered at one of his legacies and investments, the Wells Carlton Hotels and Apartments in Asokurabuja, to ruminate and examine the meaning of the life and times of Captain. We have gathered here today to celebrate the impacts of a man whose life continues to speak volumes till today. Not only are we celebrating a life well lived, but we are also setting the stage for continuity to ensure that the vision of this great hero is sustained. Rochelle Goodrich once wrote, You are here to make a difference, to either improve the world or worsen it. And whether or not you consciously choose to, you will accomplish one or the other. Our father was a man on a mission. Every moment had to count for something. Whether he was spending time with his family, reviewing business opportunities, or designing practical systems and solutions for adding value to the life of others within and outside the country. His legacy of impact will always be felt and celebrated. Long after today's event is over, it is my deepest desire that your hearts will be ignited with the vision of impact and lasting change. I hope the core values of service, sacrifice, philanthropy, and significance, which my father boldly embodied, would linger in your hearts as you, and spur you on as you journey through life purposefully. Once again, I welcome you all to this memorial summit as we honor the life and impacts of an icon, a role model to me and to many others who will always be fondly remembered, Captain Dr. Idahosa Wells Okumbo. It was only fitting and proper to examine his life in the context of lasting legacy, the key to Nigeria's development. Considering that the man, the entrepreneur, the billionaire business mogul, the man who lived his life like Honorable Razak Bello Sage described him as a philanthropist in chief, left behind monumental strides and footprints, which could enable us to rediscover ourselves as Nigerians and leave behind for generations to come enough guides to make Nigeria a true giant it should be. Speaker after speaker, whether keynote or panelists or those who merely asked questions or made comments from across the political and religious divides and ages, all poured encomium as they all regaled who the man Captain Dr. Wells Hosa Kumbo was. What was certain to make Captain live on through the generations and history of Nigeria was what culminated the event, performed by the children, led by his eldest daughter, Her Royal Majesty Oluri Atuashe III. This was huge, a memorial in honor of their father, the Wells Hosa Okumbo Foundation, which will focus on education, entrepreneurship, youth empowerment, and established to continue the passionate commitment of their father to raising world changes in the areas of interest of the foundation. In her words, my father was a visionary leader, but he was also a patriot in every sense of the word. He loved Nigeria. As much as he sent all of us abroad to school, at least for the first three of us that he had the benefit of seeing us graduate immediately after school. I studied, I would speak for myself personally, I studied um, law in, in England and immediately after my law degree, my father said, yeah, pack your bags, you're going to go and do law school in Nigeria. There's nothing for you in this foreign country. <laughs> um, and he ensured I packed my bags because I didn't want to come. But that was because 
I believe he saw something in this country that most people don't. He saw hope. He saw poss possibility. He saw a potential future that speaks true to us as the giants of Africa. And so he didn't just invest in his children going abroad to study. He ensured that they came back to implement the study in the country that he, they come from. And I'm standing here as a living testimony of that. And I'm very thankful that I came back. The event occurred at the maiden lecture organized by the family of Captain Jose Okumbo, where the former Nigerian president was the keynote speaker. Before coming to speak directly on the man of the moment, the former president took a swipe at Nigeria's history of politics, which has not left enduring hallmarks to enable generations after to have a sense of purpose and a legacy with which to uplift the nation. We should think about legacies of individuals, legacy of a nation. In fact, this morning before at about 10 a.m., so I got a text from Nairobi, from Kenya. I just returned last night from Kenya where I went there to observe their elections. And uh, I sent a text that seven ladies have won governorship positions. Seven. <laughs> ladies have won governorship positions. So I started asking myself, when will we elect female governors in Nigeria? I believe somebody have left a legacy. At a particular time in their political evolution, somebody has done something. So I'm going to look through about a little bit about our political journey as a nation and try to find out the legacies that were left behind. Sometimes may be bitter, sometimes could be tasty, but they really leave legacies of unity in this country or legacies of division in this country. He found time to compare Nigerian politicians with Ghana's young pioneer model, which helped to inculcate in young Ghanaians their passion for their nation and a desire to leave a legacy. Or the case of Tanzania, where Julius Nyerere endeavored to hammer a common Swahili language as a way to forge unity and a purpose. These countries and their politicians lived a life of purpose and their legacies, their countries were the better for it. Our Nigerian politicians, he argued, must leave a legacy of unity. I will draw examples from Tanzania at the inception of their political evolution, what he really did to consolidate the politics of Tanzania. We will also look at what Nkrumah did in his leadership philosophy that led to the consolidation of Ghana. Of course, in Nigeria now, you can list intellectuals who tell you, oh, Nigeria is not a nation. There is always the emphasis of ethnic nationalities in Nigeria. There's so many countries are built of different nationalities. You hardly see an intellectual from Ghana talking about Ghana is not a nation, Ghana is not a nation. But here we celebrate. So till today, we've not been able to uh, move from ethnic nationalities to a country and we believe more in our ethnic nationalities. Is that what is our problem or there are some other issues? Speaking on Captain Okumbo, the former president, President Jonathan Goodluck, Billy Jonathan, talked about his dedication for others and family through his business, investing in people. He lived a life of philanthropy, he said, and would be remembered for his large heart and his attention to the needy. Today we are here because somebody, Captain Hosa Okumbo, left legacies as an individual. Because as an individual family level, we must also leave legacies. As a businessman, one thing I know that endeared him to people across different social st status was his warmth, openness, and generosity. If he was not a pleasant and sociable fellow, probably most of us here wouldn't have been here. Probably I wouldn't have been here too. But because this man left a legacy, he was an entrepreneur who carved a niche for himself by investing in people 
And in those businesses that made significant impact in the Nigerian economy and the lives of the people. Captain lived a life of philanthropy. Although he achieved so much as a businessman and invested in big enterprises, he will perhaps be remembered more for his large heart, spirit of philanthropy, and love for the needy. One of his legacies that will continue to endure is that he nurtured and mentored many to become responsible members of the society, including his own children, who he gave the best guidance in character and in learning. The panelists were called up, and each of them, Dr. And Mrs. Obi Egoze Kwesili, Tonya Cole, Ota Orandam, and Bishop Dr. Febi Daosa made very valuable contributions and provided insights into how education can cause a legacy. Speaking first, Dr. Obi Eze Kwesili urged the audience to look at the crisis and urgency in our hands in Nigeria and on the continent, where 9 out of 10 children have not the literacy and numeracy quality that 10-year-old children in advanced nations have. If we do not act, 9 out of 10 children are doomed to poverty. When we established a program to focus on uh, human capital issues on our continent, um, especially because current data shows that the continent is in deep crisis, and it has to do with some of the things that uh, the former president, President Jonathan, was saying about uh, society and the resilience of society. It's that nine out of every 10 African children do not have the literacy and numeracy skills that 10 year olds around the world have. That's, that's a disaster. I mean, that, that's not even a disaster, that's an emergency. Because the research also shows that the lack of foundational literacy and numeracy skills by the time a child is 10 is a predictor of lifelong poverty. So we can, at the parachute level, be saying we want to tackle poverty and we're not paying attention to the fact that the foundational skills of nine children out of every 10 will remain poor until we correct it as a continent. We're not going anywhere. Why was this important for me? When we launched this program, we invited the Her Majesty, and within a turnaround time of two weeks, she actually made it her duty to show up in Abuja and to be one of the speakers. And I don't forget things like that because they are demonstration of what people value. If you show me what you value, I can decide whether I connect to it or not. And so legacy is being here because I saw in your sister someone who clearly was epitomizing the values that I subscribe to. And for me, growing up um, visiting one of the communities where we started in 2011, when I was posted to Lagos for my National Youth Service. I went into the community, which many of us are very familiar with, called Makoko. And as a youth copper, for the first time, growing up in a family where I, I had literally everything I wanted, I saw children who never had food to eat, clothes to wear, and education. And for me, it was a shock it was almost a traumatizing experience. Because I'm like, how would this happen? How would this be a reality in what we call the mega city, the, the, the economic capital of, of a great country like Nigeria with incredible opportunities and potential? And I was working in the bank, and I kept asking myself every other day, what will it really be? What, 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 will, what will my service really mean to this nation if at the end of my service here, we do not get these children into school. And so every other Thursday, I would go into that community and teach them because that was my CDS day. I was about 23, 24. And I did that for a couple of weeks, but I realized that that was not enough. These children needed to be in a classroom. And after a couple of months, I was, I was pushed 
you know, by my spirit to quit my job in the bank and focus on trying to get partnerships and get volunteers and raise resources to get those kids into school. This was in 2012. In 2012, we, it was a huge decision, a very terrible decision that, I, that everyone felt I had made. My friends were like, we've invested so much in you. Why do you want to quit a great job like this to go into a community and help kids you have no connection with? But for me, it was not about legacy, it was about purpose. It was telling myself that if these kids do not have education before the, before the end of my service, I would not find myself feeling fulfilled. We struggled, we raised funds, we got 114 children into school in 2012. And, 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 and 10 years later, over 50% of those children are done with their secondary school. Two are at the back of this, 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 this room because they're on scholarship here in Abuja. But that is not really the great story. What we did inspired thousands of volunteers. It inspired several organizations, over 300 organizations that we've partnered with, over 15,000 volunteers. Our impact has grown to over 600,000 children across this country. And for me, when I reflect on the experience and the opportunity I had as a child, legacy is paying it forward. And today we see that so many of those young kids, many of them, about five of them are done with the university, 59 the university, over 50 are done with secondary school. Thousands are across secondary schools. That's legacy, not, because of, not, not, just, not just legacy for me, but legacy for them because they are paying it forward. We have a lot of those kids who have gone back to their community to start raising another generation of young kids who are going into schools. And I feel it's, it's important that at some point, every one of us in this nation, I, I, I loved the example that His Excellency gave. We all need to be citizens. If we want to build a nation that we will be proud of, we need to stop being tribesmen. We need to stop being idiots. We need to start being citizens. And being citizens mean living a life of legacy and standing up for those who do not have voices and those really who cannot pay us back. Thank you. You know, legacy and starts, first of all, for me, with the name that you present to your children. If there's one thing that my father did, apart from education, is that he left a name. He left a name that went so far ahead of me that it began to open doors that I did not even know existed. A recent one was sitting down at the National Institute uh, in, in Kuru. And the first, one of the early lectures that I went to, the directing staff was talking about the people who formulated the policy uh, that ended up building the school. And he mentioned my father's name, had no idea who I was, did not know my father, but he mentioned, he said, one of those great men that sat down and put this entire thing here is somebody called Patrick Daly Cole, that those were the men back in the days that held the civil service. And he was talking in, with passion about what the civil service used to be versus what it is today. He had no idea, I didn't say anything, it must have been about a month later that he, that's my directing staff, it suddenly dawned on him that, hang on, your name is Toyin Patrick Cole. And the person I was talking about is Patrick Daly Cole, he says, is that your father? And I said, yes, it is. But I remembered again, this is one of many examples of sitting down in a room where the weight of an expectation that had already been put forward by somebody who just diligently served had opened doors and put responsibility to you to do what is right. And so for me, when my father uh, made an impact, it's in the name. And then I remember, even as uh, Mr. President was speaking, that then legacy is not about buildings, it's not about statues, it's not about billboards and posters. Legacy goes from one generation into another generation. And most times, when we think about what makes a difference in life. Mr. President never mentioned who was the richest man in Ghana at the time in 1960s, in 1950s. He did not mention who was the richest Tanzanian at the time. He didn't mention who was the biggest entrepreneur. And all, those were not the things that created the legacy moving forward. What he talked about were the names of people who transformed their nation 
by doing things and setting parameters for generations to come on. And that's exactly what this is. We have our royal father sitting here. He's sitting on a throne that people long before him had built legacy on. And that's why he's here today. And he has a, he's now carrying the weight of that office for his own generation and for his own children moving forward. The name that he leaves behind is what his children will benefit from. The, the name that Captain Nosa, uh, Hosa left behind is exactly what the family is living on today. For me, my father left a good name. Well, he still has, he's still alive, so he built a good name. I have that responsibility to carry that forward for my own children and for their children as well. To me, legacy is, I heard a saying once that says you can, you can count the number of seeds in an orange, but you cannot count the number of trees in an orange seed. And to me, I, I modified that to, to a mango and said, okay, you can count the number of seeds in a mango, that's just one. But the number of um, trees in that mango seed you cannot count because that mango seed will, will give you 20, 30, 40 um, more trees that will come out of that one because that one seed will give you one tree. In that tree will give you many, many more mangoes, which have many, many more seeds. And then those seeds will give you many, many more trees. So you cannot really count the number of trees in that one seed. Here's how this works with legacy. So with a legacy of people who have left a great name, like my father, Benton de Hosa, or like Captain Osa Akuma, we're here today. They were one seed. But when that seed is planted, the Bible talks about how if a seed does not die in the ground, it cannot truly be alive. That one seed then grows up. It gives you many, many more trees. In those trees are many, many more seeds. That's how legacy works. Because you see, one life will give you many lives. We have several children here today. And these children have many, many more seeds. You have, a, you have a, um, an organization that, that's going to give funding to other people to help them start businesses. Otto has um, started Slum to School, which um, the students from Slum to School have come into our university. We're giving them scholarships, and then they're going out now, and they're going to do many more things. We're talking this morning about how we don't know what that one young lady who has come to our school will do in the future. That's a legacy, because in the future, 10, 20 years from now, one day we'll all be dead. But the seed that she will do, what she will, she can help somebody else become something great. She might become a president like, like His Excellency here of the country, just from one seed. That is what legacy is. Now, has it been difficult for me? The answer, yes, it's been very difficult for me because people look at me and say, and, they, and, and my, my brother here <laughs> did the same thing, say, oh, can you fill your father's shoes? For me, it was very difficult because for many years I was trying to be him. I would dress like him. I would try to wear his shoes, literally. I would try to, his friends would call on the phone. I would say, hello, Bishop. And I would try to speak in his voice. I would take his sermons and preach his exact same sermons. And one day, God tapped me on the shoulder and said, stop trying to fill your father's shoes. I've given you your own shoes to fill. And so it shifted my focus to say, you know, I'm not going to try to wear his shoes. I need to find my own shoes. He's given me my own shoes. And my shoes will take me far. Because the shoes he gave him took him to where he was. And so my shoes, when I put my feet in my shoes, they will take me to where God has said I should go to. And I want to say that to everyone who is a second generation um, child and legacy carrier. Because it's, the weight of the name is heavy. But that weight is what helps you get to where you, where you are. It is said that um, we stand on the shoulders of those who have gone before us. And that's truly a blessing to have a name like Okumbo or a name like either Hosa that has gone before you, you can stand on that shoulder. And then from there you can see far and you can begin to take those mango seeds, the one seed, and plant more trees. That is what legacy is. And that's how you can become something great. An opportunity was given to former Governor Adams Aliu Shomale to speak. He was a politician that he always is, remarking that Dr. Goodluck Ibele Azikiwe Jonathan, by his action of accepting his announced defeat in 2015 and his investment in Almajiri schools in the north, has, like Dr. Wells Hosa Kumbo, left a legacy. Even in this room, Mr. President, you left a legacy. Forget that I had cause to fight you <laughs> politically, but that is what 
But that is what politics is about. The power of example, the legacy you have laid, there is no successor who can afford to do less. That is to concede, <laughs> to concede that in a political office, even if you do the unthinkable, be an angel in politics, the logic of multi-party democracy which you spoke to is that even an angel can be defeated in an election. And that you considered it at the time Nigerians were truly afraid, where generals and bishops signed an agreement to betray peace. You didn't need anybody to call on you. And you made that historic call. That is a legacy that, however critical you are, I can't see a future Nigeria president wanting to question the judgment of Nigerians, whatever he thinks of himself. So, you are an example of a leader who left something behind that nobody, that is the minimum standard now. And I'm sure by 2023 that will also play out. One of the things that you did that, by example, not by preaching, was when you launched the Almaziri School. And what was your objective? That no Nigerian child should be left roaming the street. And you appropriated federal funds in addition to the funds that were there for universal basic education, you appropriated special funds to reinforce that so that there shall be no child roaming the street like one of them mentioned. So the essence of what I'm saying is that these ideas are not new. What we like is the will to translate what we say into practice. There were comments and questions from the audience. Most interesting was one Wadada Aliu, who said because of his closeness to Captain, he could be called Wadada Okumbo. Also a classmate who has stayed close to Captain from their college days in Wari from 1975 to Honorable Razak Bello Osage, who described Okumbo as a philanthropist in chief, to a young Okumbo, Ogogo Okumbo, who asked a poignant question, must we live in Nigeria to make a difference? To Senator Dino Malaya's appreciative comments, all are agreed that the man being remembered a year after, Captain Dr. Wells Hose Okumbo, was a very good man indeed. Coming here and not saying a word about this one single Nigerian with multiple competences, great Nigerian, humanist par excellence, I will feel not fulfilled. And I can say that Captain is so generous, so kind. He was in London in his sick bed after the election he traveled. I was running for something in Kogi. Captain still sent money. Just a few, few weeks before he passed on. Sent money. I think I saw the, the young man here. He normally, anytime I see that guy from Captain, I, I just said, uh, <laughs> I want to see him all the time. <laughs> you know, because anytime I see him in my house, I know there's a message. He sent me money. So that is the type of man we are celebrating here today. And I prophesy, and my singular prayer is this, that all his children will be older than him in Jesus' name. Amen. And by the special grace of God, you will do greater things than your father. Amen. I celebrate this man, and I want please uh, to the family, I will want to be part of everything that I have to do with Captain. He's a good man, he died a good man, and by the grace of God, at the resurrection hour, we will see again. Thank my you. My brother died. That day, I don't think if you took a knife, a blunt one for that matter, to cut my hand, the pain would be anything compared to how I felt seeing him go. And it goes to show that, just like they say, like what philosophers say, that legacy is not what you leave for people, it's what you live in them. It is not the inheritance, there's a big difference. I'm glad and healed most of the time when I think of my brother, when I hear what people say about him. It is not what he gave, what they say about the impression he left in their minds. 
That is why I tell them, my children, that look, the greatest gift and the greatest legacy you can take from your father is not the material things you see. It is one thing that everybody has said about him, which is love, kindness, embellished in goodwill and love for people. The father of the day, the Ulu of Wari, Atua the third, who is also an in-law to late Captain Hosea Kumbo, had a response on the panelists' discussions and share his thoughts on his departed in-law at the event. And attaining this is never easy because great men who have truly achieved in this life, there is a temptation that comes their way. A temptation that wants them to settle for the real time success they enjoy. And this is because there is no shortage of people lining up to embellish their elegance and their eloquence, constantly telling them, Baba, it's not easy to make money like this. You have done well. You have done well. And there are many Nigerians who have done well. But once they die, there's not much celebrated in terms of legacy. Some of them even go about it in their own wisdom and their own energy to launder their own image, which fades away once they are no longer buoyant or have passed away. And this brings me back to the year 2010, and I pulled Tonya's leg. I am very happy to see Tonya today because I was part of the, um, the trainee program that his company, Sahara, uh, did. And I remember when um, Tonya Tokwe Kola, and they spoke to about 15, 20 of us, and they asked us a question, which till today I still look around to see is there an answer. And this was in terms of business legacy. They said, how many Nigerian-owned businesses can you count that have survived the proprietor's death and we were all there in the room naming some names and they were quickly telling us is it where the proprietor left it and the answer was no and we were trying to defend it saying well it's because their wealth was tied to politics or um, there is no power generation in Nigeria. They were into manufacturing. So many excuses. But ultimately, that really opened our eyes to see that for whatever reason, we suffer from a culture of good legacy in our business world, even in our political sphere. And I am very happy to see, and what they had said to us on that day was that, they intended that Sahara would be the shell of Africa. That they would be able to walk away from this company, not because they were old, and that they would not force their children, who maybe don't have any interest in the company, to say that you must, you must uh, fill our shoes, but that they would hire competent people to continue this hard work that they had started. And their children would still benefit from it anyways. And that is something that has never left my mind. The event has come and gone. But the poem by Osanwese Okumbo in honor of her dad and the vote of thanks by Olori Atuashe III show how much Captain Dr. Wells Jose Okumbo is loved by his children and would be missed. So the poem I'm reciting today is called Holding the Fort. Within the earth's beautifully textured greenery and the clear sky's scenery, the constancy of my voice has remained. Age-long wisdom explained. Do not lose sight of your heritage, I exclaim. Distractions and distortions you must tame. For you who have risen to heights today must make room for others to build upon the foundations you lay. That in the fullness of time, when, one, when what was once my vision becomes yours, you shall, with every sense of continuance, groom the progenitor's vine. 
in a behemoth of generational sustenance that soars. Thank you. It is with great honor that I would like to announce, on behalf of my family, the launch of the Wells Hosa Okumbo Foundation. This foundation is an expression of his undying legacy. Established primarily to consolidate and to continue his passionate commitment to raising world changers in the core areas of education, entrepreneurship, and youth empowerment in Nigeria. Through this outfit, we are determined to revolutionize the face of industrialization on the continent of Africa by promoting indigenous innovations that can boldly make a mark in the global space. The necessary systems for deployment are currently evolving, and in the near future, I'll be reaching out to many people in this room for, for, for continued funding. <laughs> the dreams of the African child as we sat here and all our panelists rightly said are valid, and we are poised to release the momentums for these dreams to take flight. We look forward to working with institutions such as the slums to school, human capital, and many more to see the, the legacy of Captain Hosa become established. A special thank you to our keynote speaker once again, His Excellency Dr. Goodluck Abella Jonathan, for his holistic presentation and contribution to the subject matter. I'll see you again. Cause good men never die